it is. Well, and there's our raccoon. There's your friend, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's cranky. He's got a little skin missing. Is that mange? Uh, hard to tell just yet. I mean, that looks like a more rubbing. If it's mange, mange usually attacks the tail first. Yeah, he's unhappy. I wouldn't want him in my house for sure. He's been coming in. And we'd wake up in the morning and find the cat food all eaten. I stayed on the couch last night because if the trap was set, I actually set it right up to the cat door so that he would come in and go right into the trap because that's how he was getting into the house. Well, let me see what I can do with him. And I'll let you know. So I'll take him for now and go from there. All right. Yeah. All right. Time will tell once we release him. Uh, if he decides to turn on us and come after us, maybe he actually is sick, be it distemper or rabies. And if it is, I will have to euthanize this raccoon, unfortunately. He doesn't realize it. You son of a gun. All right, bud. I know. You're a ferocious beast. Now, this guy here, he's going to be in raccoon heaven over here. And I'm going to scoot when he goes. Yeah. I know. Planning your next move for me, huh, bub? He took right off. That's exactly what we're looking for. There's nothing about this raccoon that's indicative of it having rabies or any other type of uh, neurological disease. It's a happy day for the raccoon. I'm happy I was able to help this woman out with releasing the raccoon. Ultimately, those are dangerous animals. You don't want to get your fingers too close. With that said, I'm really happy with what we've been able to achieve to uh, take this healthy raccoon, put it in a better place. Both parties are going to be real happy for it.